So this video is on the practice for the equation quiz that we did in class today on, on block number one. Um, uh, this is a video just in case anyone needs to see anything or if anyone's absent and is having questions on this. So when we have an absolute value equation, you want to isolate your absolute value, get it all by itself. So I am going to minus 11 from both sides I'm going to get the absolute value of 3x minus 5 is equal to 2x plus 18. At this point, this 2x plus 18, I do not know if this is positive, negative, or zero. This cannot be negative because otherwise that would lead to um, no solution because an absolute value can never equal a negative. So we want to check that at the end. So we are going to write two equations. One equation is going to be 3x minus 5 equals 2x plus 18. The other equation is going to be 3x minus 5 is equal to the opposite, which is a negative 2x minus 18. And then I'm going to solve. So for the first one, I'm going to minus 2x from both sides, and I get x minus 5 is equal to 18. I'm going to add 5 to both sides, and I get x is equal to 23. Now, I'm going to check my answer in a second. Let me just uh, see what I get for the other one. In this case, I'm going to add 2x to both sides. I'm going to get 5x minus 5 is equal to negative 18. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I get 5x is equal to negative um, 13. And then I get x is equal to negative 13 fifths. Now, um, when I'm trying to decide if these are the answers, I want to take both of these and put them into the equations. So I need to check both of these answers, the 23 and the negative 13 fifths into this uh, 2x plus 18, because an absolute value can't equal negative. Well, when I put a 23 in here, that's obviously going to give me a positive. So 23 will be an answer. Let's take a look at what I get when I put in, um, my negative 13 fifths. So I'm going to go and just move this over a little bit. So I'm going to go um, two, two um, times a negative 13 fifths. And then that's going to be added to an 18. And I got a positive 12.8. So both of these did end up giving me positive answers. So so this one here is going to be a solution. And this one here is also going to be a solution because they both made that 2x plus 18 negative. I'm sorry, positive, I called this. So two times 23 plus 18 equals a positive. And two times negative 13 fifths plus 18 was a 12.5, which is positive. So that one also, or sorry, 12.8, I apologize. Okay, on number two. So on number two, we have a square root. We want to get it isolated, which it is. I have an x plus three on the other side. I can't have a negative here. So we are gonna be checking our answers once we work this out. So. I am going to have the square root of a 27 minus x is equal to x plus 3. I am going to square both sides. And when I square this side, I get a 27 minus x. And on the other side, remember, it is a perfect square trinomial. It is an x plus 3 times x plus 3. Do a box if you need to, or use the formula a plus b squared is equal to a squared, where you square the first term, multiply together, and double, so that's gonna be a two ab, and then square the end. So I'm gonna use the formula. So I'm gonna square my x and I get an x squared. 
I'm going to multiply my um, 3 and my x together and then double it. I get a 6x. And then I'm going to square my not my 3, which gives me a 9. Now I'm going to get everything on one, on one side, 0 on the other. So I'm going to minus 27 from both sides. I am also going to add x to both sides. That way I get 0 is equal to x squared plus 7x minus 18. So then what multiplies to a negative 18 and adds to a 7? Well, that's going to be a 9 and a negative 2. So I'm going to have an x plus 9 and an x minus 2. So that's going to be x is equal to a negative 9 and x is equal to 2. But remember, we need to take that and check and see if this x plus 3 is going to be positive or negative. So if I put that up here, I'm going to get a negative 9 plus 3, which is negative. So that means that this one here is not going to be an answer. Then I'm going to take this one. Let me do it in uh, green. I'm going to take this one and put it in here. So that's going to give me a 2 plus 3, which is 5. So this one is an answer. x equal 2 is my final answer. The other one is not an answer. On number three, okay, we are going to get, um, hopefully notice that we have a square root of x minus two in both of these here. So I'm going to let u equal the square root of x minus two. So this is going to be six u squared equals 36 u. Now I want to get both bases to be the same. So I need the 6 and the 36 to be the same. I cannot make the 6 bigger because I'd have to square it and then I'd have to square the other side and squaring a 36 is not going to be helpful. But a 36 is the same as a 6 squared. So this is going to be 6 u squared. This is going to be 6 squared raised to the power u. And when I do that, my power to power, the 2 times the u, those are going to multiply. So I am going to get 6u squared equals 6 to the 2u. When my bases are now the same, okay, so now I have a 6 and a 6, I am going to set my exponents equal because I know they have to equal each other. Now I'm going to get um, 0 on one side, so I'm going to minus 2u. I'm going to factor out a u from both terms, and I get a u minus a u times a u minus two. So this is going to give me u equal zero. This is going to give me u equal two. Remember, the original problem had this u being a square root of x minus two. So I am going to take the square root of x minus 2 equals 0 and work that out. I need to check this 0 because it is a square root. That's OK. Square roots can equal 0. I'm going to square both sides. And I'm going to get x equal 2 as one answer. I am going to do the same here. I'm going to put a square root of x minus 2 equals 2. Again, I'm going to check that 2. A square root can equal a positive 2, so that's OK. I'm going to square both sides. So I'm going to get an x minus 2 is equal to 4. And so I get x is equal to 6. And those are my two answers. On 4, this is another one where we're going to do let u equal. So we see that we have an x to the 1 half. And we see that we have an x. If I take x to the 1 half and let that be the u, and I was to square an x to the 1 half, power to power, I would get x to the first or just x. So that means my x is going to be my u squared. So this is going to be u squared. This is going to be minus 5u minus 24 equals 0. So 
I am going to have u squared minus 5u minus 24 equals 0. I'm going to do a diamond and factor what multiplies to a negative 24 and adds to a negative 5. That's going to be a negative 8 and a 3. So I'm going to get a u minus 8 and a u plus 3 equals 0. This is going to be u equal 8, u equal negative 3. Now, I'm going to... Okay, so let's try this one more time. So um, we got u is equal to 8 and u is equal to negative 3. So we need to solve for our x. And remember, over here we had um, our u was equal to x to the 1 half. So this is going to be x to the 1 half is equal to 8. And this one's going to be x to the 1 half is equal to negative 3. Now, when you have something raised to the 1 half power, a little reminder, x to the 1 half is the square root of x. And so we're going to be looking for a principal root here, a positive root. So this one here that's equal to an 8 would be OK. I'm going to solve that. This one here that's equal to a negative, that one's not going to be OK. That's going to be no solution. So what do I do now? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides. Or you can think about it if this wasn't a 1 half. Any, it was some other power, raise it to the reciprocal. The reciprocal of one half is two or two over one. And I'm gonna raise both sides to the power two. And I get X is equal to 64 and that's my answer. And if you accidentally did the other one, I would have ended up with uh, X is equal to nine. But if I put that in, let me get my calculator one more time. So if I was to put that in to this equation and let me put do it so I can see the equation would be helpful, huh? Okay. And so if I was going to be putting in a nine, nine minus five times nine raised to the one half, I'm gonna put it in as a 0.5. It's hard to see that decimal, but it's there. Um, arrow out, then minus 24. I should be getting zero and I don't, I get a negative 30. Why? Because this is one of those extraneous solutions. Now, if I was to try my 64, 64 minus um, five times 64 raised to the one half. Again, I'm gonna put it as a 0.5 minus 24 you see I got zero and that's what they had wanted. So you can always check your answers. But the reason that one of these is not working, did not mean to do that, is because this was equal to a negative. So we're not gonna get that answer. That answer is not going to be there. And so we get X is equal to 64. So hopefully this helps you out. Steady, steady, steady.